This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Ramble, and I'm Alex. How about that, huh? We'll be here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, guess who? It's Larry Bubbles Brown. Meh. Meh. That's one of your catchphrases. Yeah, it's a stupid sound. But, uh... Yeah, well, do the sound. Go do it for real. Meh. Meh. I was watching you doing your set on Letterman, the second set. Okay. And every now and then... I think I did it on there, yeah. Oh, you did it a lot. Okay. <laughs> um, man. Where did, where did that come up from? You know? I used to greet people like... Uh, I think I've told this story before, but uh, when when I was walk, People said it sounds like Edward G. Robinson, but it was actually when I was walking to eighth grade... Uh, there was this bird in this nest in this tree I'd pass every day. And he'd, every time I'd walk by, he'd go, meh. The bird would go, meh. Yeah, and I don't know. I think he was sick or something. But how, but how, did you, how did you think to incorporate that into your act? That's the part I don't get. I used to greet people that way. Instead of saying hello, I, I just kind of like the bird. I go, meh. I did that as a kid. And then one night I did it on stage at Tommy T's, and the crowd went crazy for some reason. So I just been pounding it in the ground ever since that's the way acts are formed by the way folks yeah <laughs> you're doing a live act before an audience and ta -da, that's it you know you find find something that works you hold on to it like exactly like, like it was grim death yeah right <laughs> how's business lately larry uh, it's picking up a little so uh yeah. Yeah. I just uh, and I had uh, you know what really depressed me. Uh, the other night was the 41st anniversary of my first paid gig, and I started thinking about that, and it got me 41 years ago. It got me so depressed. I've been suicidal, but yeah, that much time has gone by. Well, you're not suicidal. You're too cowardly to. Too cowardly. You're like me. I'm a real I, man. I, I, Listen, I would have committed suicide years ago, but I, I, I don't have the nerve to do it. So that is kind of manly if you can pull it off. Well, uh, Hemingway thought it was manly. He blew his head off. Yeah. You know. Very manly. Yeah. Well, you know something else? They say that if you commit suicide that way, that you have a dislike for the human race. Uh, that that you don't want to leave a body that's neat and nice, which would be nice for the people. See, because the only people that are going to be affected by your suicide are the people who see the remains of that suicide. Yeah. And then they're perhaps impacted by it for the rest of their life. Does that make sense? Yeah, it is kind of a big F you. To <laughs> it is. It's a, major, you leave it's a major F you. And... Uh, uh, it it because you're leaving you're not leaving a body that's neat you're leaving a body for instance that his head is blown off oh here let's go see Bob oh Bob's head got blown off you know and then you remember that for the rest of your life right so yeah uh, that'd be hard to get out of your head oh incredible uh, so uh, people commit suicide that way that don't leave a nice looking corpse. Uh, are are being antisocial? Okay, they want to get even with everybody. Oh, I'll show them. Boom! Now they got to look at this. Yeah. When they find me. Um, and I, of course, if I did it, they just go, "Oh, look, Alex Bennett got." It. Does anybody recognize that body? No, he hasn't got a head. <laughs> oh, maybe it's Alex. He used to live here. Anyway. Um, but I could never, I could never commit. You couldn't commit suicide, could you? I'd be, it's too scary. I'm too afraid, yeah. Yeah, too afraid of it. Because, you know, what if you pull the trigger, you blow your head off, and the moment you blow your head off, you go, you think to yourself, boy, this was a bad idea. <laughs> 
Well, they say a lot of people that jump off the Golden Gate Bridge that have survived, they, as soon as they jump, they realize it was a mistake. Good question. I, I got this answer, by the way, years ago. What is the most favored side of the bridge to commit suicide? That is the the east side, uh, San Francisco. I mean the ocean. No, San yeah. Francisco. You're saying looking at San Francisco? It's a side that's uh, looking closer to the bay. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. The I was told that the side looking most at the ocean is the one they commit suicide on. No, it's just the opposite. They're just the opposite. I thought it was. Uh, you would, you would. I read this uh, years ago that uh, they would say you would think that because that's as furthest you could go west and looking out in the ocean. But they said <laughs> the simple reason for that is there's no parking on that side from San Francisco, <laughs> so it's, it's just easier. <laughs> um, we did a thing. You may remember. Were you around when we were doing one thousand by two thousand? I remember you got so much heat for that, yeah. We did a, a stunt on the show called 1,000 by 2,000. We had heard that there were 992 suicides on the Golden Gate Bridge, and it was approaching 1,000. So we decided we were going to hold a contest on who was going to be the 1,000th uh, <laughs> person. And we had a whole gift of pri a list of prizes for the family of the guy person who committed suicide, the 1,000th person. So now there's another suicide, and it's in the paper, and then there's another suicide. Now we're up to 997, right? <laughs> and we're doing this every day. Oh, who's going to be 1,000 by 2,000? And uh, that, that whole idea of 1,000 by 2,000, the name actually Lori Thompson came up with. That's great. And 1,000 by 2,000. And all of a sudden, they decided they weren't going to do anything for me, and they stopped announcing when the deaths were. So if there was another death on the Golden Gate Bridge, they did not announce it. Whoever is in charge of that, like the Bridge Authority or whatever, because they didn't want us to have our promotion. And we would never know when the thousandth came. So when 998 came, I got a call from somebody. There was a suicide last night on the bridge. I said, okay, we made 998. And then 999, you know, you know. now they figure we're not going to mention anything. When 1,000th comes and it's going to be like in the next couple of days, we're just not going to make it available to anybody because we don't want Alex Bennett to run his contest. <laughs> and I get a call from somebody. I didn't call you. You don't know who I am, but I work at the Bay Bridge, at Golden, Golden Gate Bridge, and we just had our thousandth death. Wow. Well, the next morning, we're playing trumpets and uh, <laughs> you know, da, na, 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 stars and stripes forever and everything saying, we've hit 1,000 deaths. And we don't know who it is yet, but when we find out, the, the winner's family is going to get our prize package. And we have this whole prize package of stuff <laughs> to give to the people of the guy or whoever it was that committed suicide. And finally, they admitted it. The Golden Gate Bridge admitted it. Yes, we had the thousandth. And he was. And I decided not to give the gift package away. And here was the reason why. The guy had driven all the way from New York to the Golden Gate Bridge driven out to the middle of the Golden Gate Bridge, stopped his car, got out, and jumped. And I said, what an inconsiderate son of a bitch. <laughs> because I've been across that bridge, and I know how much a stalled car can cause a traffic jam. And he was inconsiderate, so we're not giving the prize package away. <laughs> That's all there he doesn't deserve it. You, you know. didn't know. I mean, we have to hand it to him. He drove all the way from New York City, you know. It's an awfully long way to go to get away from New York. <laughs> <You know? laughs> he had a lot of ch time to change his mind. <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was my big promotion. Um, and we we were we were co we were constantly getting calls from the bridge people saying, "Don't do that. It's terrible. It's horrible." I go, "Well, you know, 
that's the favorite bridge uh, anywhere for people to commit suicide off of. Yeah, now yeah. it's close to seventeen hundred. And it was it was a thousand by two thousand, but we it wasn't. We, I don't think it happened in two thousand that we did it. Uh, it was close, but it wasn't two thousand. Uh, and um, supposedly, um, uh, you know, I mean, that bridge was built in what nineteen thirty six. 37. For 37. So we went how many years? You're good at this. How many years? Uh, well, 37 to 97 would be 60. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, vaguely, that's how many deaths a year off that bridge average? That would be about uh, uh, 15, okay. 16. This is uh, Larry Bubbles Brown, in case you just joined us, the human calculator. Yeah, that is right. I, I did read that it is about 16 a year. Mm hmm. So that's not bad, you know. No. I would have thought that's going to change because now they've spent two hundred and fifty million dollars for the suicide net. So I don't know if it's going to be possible anymore. Well, you know, they had they had nets under the bridge when they were building it. Mm -hmm. Just if people fell off the bridge, they'd fall into the net. But what they found is they fell into the net and then they bounced out and fell into the water. Now maybe that broke their fall a bit. But uh, nets don't really work. What they've also done, they didn't they did ever have a, anything where the railing is. And I think the railing now all across the bridge has a fence, doesn't it? They've raised it, yeah. But I think you can still, you can still, you could do it if you well, want Well, folks, to. if you're listening to us, you want to commit suicide off the Golden Gate Bridge. Just be determined to do it, okay? And don't let that barrier stop you. Or if you want to be a contrarian, do it off the Bay Bridge. <laughs> Nobody ever commits suicide off the Bay Bridge, do they? I read one, the whole time I've been here, one guy stopped his car and did jump off. Really? Why? But yeah, you don't hear about anybody doing that. Uh, well, the Golden Gate Bridge to begin with is a magnificent bridge. You know, you see the Golden Gate Bridge, you immediately know it's San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, and it's a very attractive bridge, so people, I guess, are attracted to it, like flies to a light, you know, or bees to a light, or what's a mosquitoes to a light. There we go. Um, and uh, isn't it amazing what we're talking about, folks? We're talking about suicide. This is our subject today. That's our subject. Well, does anybody jump off the bridges in the in New York? Do they all do buildings? Uh, I think they jumped out of buildings here, but they don't anymore. I think because none of the windows open up. Well, the uh, one of the I think the CEO of Bed Bath and Beyond just jumped out of a building. He in New did, York. didn't he? Yeah. I wonder if he took a bath before he did. It. <laughs> or now he's be or, now he's beyond. Or if he felt that if he jumped, there was a mattress on the. <laughs> oh no! Excuse me. He didn't. It wasn't bed or a bath. He went to Beyond. <laughs> I always wondered in Bed Bath and Beyond. What did you ever see that movie where where a guy works at Bed Bath and Beyond and they have a Beyond department and he goes no. in there behind the door and it's like this thing where you can go anywhere in the world and you, might, you know it's like the Beyond part of Bed Bath and Beyond. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, yeah, I I used to like to go down there to Bed Bath and Beyond. Where's the Beyond Department, please? I need I need the Beyond Department. Oh boy. So anyway, but no, I I'm just I couldn't commit suicide. It's just you know. Uh, have you ever had a friend that committed suicide? Uh, have I ever had a friend that? that have we had friend? Have we had any comedians that committed suicide? Yes, Robin, of course. Robin committed suicide. But he also had a debilitating disease, didn't he? He had, uh, yeah, the dementia, Louis Body, which is, uh, he was uh, not not there at all. So. You think you're in the body of Louis C.K. Uh, it's Louis Body. It's Louis Body, <laughs> Louis C.K. You know. So I think he's the only one I know, yeah. Yeah. He, I can't. I, I'm trying to think of comedians who committed suicide, and I don't know of of many. I know of some that should have, because their acts really suck. <laughs> but uh, uh, you would think you would have more comedians committing suicide, but they don't. 
you know. Right. I was trying to think. Is there anyone? There was a comic when I first started, not well known. He did. Uh, he went out in the middle of the street, poured gasoline on himself, and set himself on fire and died. And what did he do just before he died? Did he go, ta-da? <laughs> That's a bad way to go. You know? Yeah. That, that, that reminds me of an old joke that I knew about a um, kid who was being raised by his show business parents. They were in vaudeville. And <laughs> and uh, one day the father decides that he wants to teach his kid about religion. So being Catholic, he said, come on, let's go to the local Catholic church. And then he went down to the Catholic church and he said, this is the church you know, that we go to if we were to go to a church, and we want, I want you to know people come here to pray, and he discusses what religion is. All of a sudden, the kid looks over on the wall, and there is this giant crucifix with Christ hanging from it, right? And the kid says, hey, look, Dad, ta-da! <laughs> that was the only ta-da joke I know. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah um, um, but I don't. You, you're right. I mean, I can't think of any comedians that I knew that committed suicide. I've known some that have died horribly. You know, I so mean, the comedian who uh, was uh, who did the game show. He uh, yes, yes. Uh, what? Oh, I can't remember his name now. But he was a Ray Co Ray Combs. Ray, Combs. Ray Combs. Yeah, he committed suicide. But he was the worst host the Family Feud ever had, so it, it, we didn't miss him. Yeah. Uh, but no, Ray Combs did commit suicide. Was he a stand-up comic at one point? He was, yeah. Okay, okay. So now there are two. But actors, you know, commit suicide all the time. Seems like actors do it much more than comics. Is I wonder why. You know, because comics. Are, you're in a very, it's a very, to me, it's a very depressing business. It is. <laughs> really, I'm serious. I'm surprised that a man as depressed as you has chosen comedy as your chosen <laughs> profession. It just makes no sense to me. Uh, do you like getting beaten up every night by an audience? You know, I mean. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, so it's. Uh... Yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised more comics don't do it, but a lot of actors do. Well, maybe it's because every night they get beaten up, and I guess that's their masochism. Maybe they like it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I mean, I think it's. I think it's horrible that people do this, and uh, uh, and then allow themselves to get beaten up like that. I'm somewhat like that because in radio, I took it so seriously that, you know, I let it affect me. Like when I got fired or something like that, uh, it really, it really, it robbed me, it robbed me of my identity, you know? And when, when you do something in mass media, you can be the best in the world and you're still going to have zillions of people are going to just say horrible things and hate you. So, and we always focus on those no, rather than the good ones. No matter how good you are, eventually nobody's going to want you. You know? Yeah. Eventually you're going to run out. Like people say, why don't you go back and do the radio show again in San Francisco? And I said, hey, number one, I can't do that same kind of show anymore because they wouldn't let me have a studio audience to start with because they're too afraid of people coming in with bombs and guns and man, 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 right? In those days, right. anybody yeah. could walk in the door and watch the show. But also, you, you, you can't go back again. You, that was What I did was a space in time in which what I did was wanted and needed. But now, that isn't wanted or needed. I mean, I was, I think I was pretty big in San Francisco, wouldn't you say? You were huge, yes. I was huge. You would give that to the, uh, okay. I, I will, oh, absolutely. I remember that always. I will put that on my resume. Larry Brown says I was huge. Oh, uh, you were. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not joking. It was but eventually very... that ran out, you know? And if I tried to go back and recreate it, it just, it couldn't be done. Couldn't be done. 
I think you're right. And the, the things we were saying today, we would be thrown off the air. If oh, oh, forget it. You know, I mean, in, in this uh, PC world, I mean, we'd be, how, how can you say that? Why did you call women broads? Well, my father called them broads. Right. He always thought the term broad, by the way, was a nice thing to say about a woman because it meant she was take charge. You know, like she, he said, Betty Davis is a broad. A broad? <laughs> yeah. I don't know where broad ever came from, but I think... I never figured that out either. Like a, Frank Sinatra seemed like he used that word a lot. I met a lot of women that weren't very broad, you know. Yeah. But, uh, it, you know, but I mean, that, that that's a, um, uh, uh, you know, a term that uh, my father loved. But anyway, it, it, the stuff we were doing back in the day, I don't think we could have done it. You know, um, somebody mentioned that when I was in New York, I ran a thing that I would have, I was holding a contest to the first woman who would show up, uh, and it was like it was ten degrees below zero outside. I mean, it was a cold, cold day. I said uh, the first woman who shows up here wearing a bikini, you know, who walks in from the street wearing a bikini, and uh, then I think I went and did that in San Francisco at one. But when I think about that, if I try to do that today, you know the, the, the just the crap I would get for doing it? Oh my God, yeah. And it was innocent. It wasn't like I was saying, come in, wear a bikini and screw me. No, it's, that's, you know? that's fun. I mean, it's entertaining. Christ, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. But And some of the jokes we pulled, stuff you pulled. You couldn't, you couldn't do that today. You probably have cut, I bet you've t cut stuff out of your act. Yeah, you couldn't say park or whore. Or Park at Horror was our, was, we had, had Park at Horror t-shirts. Yeah. Or at least you did. You put them out. You merchandised everything you said. Merch. <laughs> that was my first attempt at merch. It was probably that actually worked. The, the, how many Park at Horror t-shirts did you sell? I think 600. Really? Yeah. And I didn't get a piece of that action? <laughs> well, I think... You know, my great business sense, I think I actually sold them at cost. <laughs> oh, I see. Because, uh, because I'm thinking, you know, I mean, I could have then said to you, well, you can't sell those. That's intellectual property of the Alex Bennett program. No, what happened was is that uh, we, we, we hired Larry to be the, the traffic guy. Yeah, because sense. we figured we, we had a traffic woman that was like metro traffic or something. And eh, who, who needs that, right? So we I, we hire Larry Brown. I don't know how much they were paying you. Probably not enough, but they were not paying enough. You. Yeah. They were paying you, and he would come in every morning and every what was it twice an hour give a traffic report. Yeah, we didn't have many like some stations doing every six minutes. We did it uh, twice an hour, and uh... yeah. And now here's Larry with traffic, and Larry didn't like traffic to be honest with you, and he would go, "Oh, there's a." blockage on the Bay Bridge right now, a car is stalled, and then you would say, Park it, whore. <laughs> <laughs> and since, park call, it, since, park since anyone commuting to work with a whore, since they're going to a job, they hate it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure in those days when you work at a club, in the middle of your act, somebody would yell out, park it, whore. Yeah, that caught on for a while. <laughs> yeah, that caught on. That was, that was a, but that, that can't, if we did that today, <laughs> they would go crazy. How can you say, how can you call women whores? Well, have you ever met them? Uh, you know, I mean, um, I mean, I can make fun here, and I don't think anybody can yeah. ruin my career. But I certainly, and, you know. And men are whores, too. So. Yeah, right, right. It, you know, so anyway. Uh, but uh, that was, that, that was a lot of fun, you know. But we... We today could not do half of the stuff we were doing, and, no. and it wasn't particularly terrible or, de you know, indecent towards women or anything. But almost anything you say today, somebody assails you for. Any anything you say is just just. And you know, we relished in a way our bad taste. I mean, part it's, yeah. your act and a certain part of your act is is bad taste. Yeah, a certain app, uh, app, part of my act was bad taste, and the only one that was meant to look bad with that bad taste was me. Right. You know, so it's it's just uh, oh the good old days. 
Uh, when you could use terms. It was a happier time. It was a happier time. And nobody got hurt. Everybody enjoyed themselves, you know, and women were respected. Right? In fact, I think most of the people that worked for me on that show were women. So. Yeah. You know, whatever. Hey, listen, we run out of time once again. It flew by today. Just talking about suicide. <laughs> oh, God. Talking well, about what, what can we talk about next that would be the equivalent of suicide? Genocide. We'll talk about genocide next time. <laughs> That's always uplifting, yeah. <laughs> Uplifting discussions with Bubs. Thank you, Larry. Thanks, Alex. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, okay, Larry Brown, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and uh, well, that's good. That's terrific. We love Larry Brown, don't we? Yes, we do. Anyway, um, so uh, let me see here. Uh, I, um, um, I'll, I'll, I'll get something to talk about. Couple of things to talk about, but uh, it, it, first of all, watch this, folks. We actually have one person waiting to go on, and the only reason why he's waiting to go on is primarily because he's going to be doing the show after this one. <laughs> so that's it. Well, g goodbye, Josh. Nice seeing you. I'll see. Good you seeing hour. you. I'll see you in an hour. You know. Sure. Yeah. You take a break, huh? Yeah, well, I might start it right now. You know, <laughs> you could just do this show. Yeah, right. somebody will call. Well, they some, always do. Somebody will call, but uh, I'm I'm getting tired of this. I'm also getting tired of the numbers of people who are watching it now. It's just getting ridiculously low, and then all of a no, sudden we'll have to start saying more controversial stuff or something well, like that. Well, I don't think that that's it at all. I I think people are just tired of Alex. I think that's really what it's all about. I don't think that's what it is. You know, and today I had an incident happen to me where I almost passed out. Well, that's not good. That's not good. Uh, I was, um, let me tell you the story quickly here. Well, it isn't a quick story. I'll, I'll just tell you the whole, the whole deal, and then I'll talk to you about the outcome. I, uh, I, I got a new... Uh, uh, internet here uh you know uh, with uh with the new uh internet uh what do you, what do you call the things uh <laughs> yeah, i'm really different now i don't, I don't mean, like a new uh, uh a new modem or whatever modem and box it. and all that yeah a new box and so along with it they gave me a year of disney bundle oh right isn't that nice well yeah, here's the deal the... i already had the disney bundle I was paying for it. This I wouldn't be paying for. But it includes, uh, let's see here, Disney, uh, 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 what do you call it, ESPN Plus, and Hulu, all right? So I had Hulu without commercials. So anyway, over the months that I've supposedly been getting this for free, uh, I wasn't getting anything for free. I mean, I was getting Disney and I was getting ESPN Plus for free, but they were still charging me for the Hulu. So I called them up and I said, what's the deal here? And they said, oh, they made a mistake. They should have uh, combined the whole thing with the Disney bundle. And so go over here and I'll click on that in there. And I said, okay, now that's of course without ads, right? Because I like it without commercials. Right. And they said, no, that's that's your, that's your just the, pros, the thing we give you for, for free for a year, uh, doesn't ha do it doesn't have Hulu with no ads. Of course not. So I said, okay, well, how can you then put on Hulu with no ads? I'm talking to Hulu. And they said, you can't do that. You're gonna have to talk, you're gonna have to talk to, uh, to, to Verizon about that. So, okay, so I hang up with them and now all of a sudden I'm got, I've got ads on my goddamn Hulu, right? So I call up Verizon and they say, well, there's not much you can do about that because that's the deal. But call Disney and they can probably do something where they'll put you on with the thing, right? With the, with the deal where you can have the Hulu with no ads and maybe pay something extra for it. And I said, 
Okay. I hung up with, hang up with them. So I called Disney. Now I'm on with Disney for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And they say, well, there's nothing you can do about it, but let's switch you over to Hulu. And they ring Hulu. Now, mind you, I went to Hulu, went over to Verizon, who then sent me to Disney, who's now sending me to Hulu. And I said, what can you do about it? And they said nothing. Now, by this time, I'm already two hours into this adventure. <laughs> and I am getting somewhat lightheaded, you know, you know I'm, and, I, and I'm just frustrated, right? And uh, I finally get to Hulu and they say, oh, well, you've got to talk to Verizon. I said, wait a minute, you know? <laughs> I went to you, then you said go to Verizon, then I went to Verizon, then they told me to go to Disney. Then Disney put me on to you at Hulu. And I'm just, I'm sick and tired of this, okay? And I am just so tense and taut that all of a sudden I get this, uh, this rush where I'm just lightheaded and I'm about almost ready to pass out. Because this thing is just stressing me so much that I imagine it just peaked my uh, my blood pressure, and that was causing me to kind of almost lose consciousness over wow. over this thing, right? So mm -hmm. finally, I just went over to. Uh, they said, "Call Verizon." So I call Verizon, <laughs> and I say to them, and so we talk for a while, and I'm trying to tell them what to do, and they, oh, they're, they're telling me, uh, oh, the person over at Disney was trying to uh, over at Hulu trying to get me to go to my Verizon account and find yeah. where the apps are and they, they can't get me in any way in to be able to do this so I just said goodbye I'll call Verizon again so I call Verizon and I just say to Verizon I tell them what the problem is I said I want you to do something very simple for me I know that if I quit your little deal your little Disney bundle deal which I was only they, they, it was only because they were still charging me for Hulu it was only saving me six dollars a month i said cancel out the disney bundle because i knew that as soon as the disney bundle was canceled the disney bundle that i originally had would automatically kick in so finally they they just killed the disney bundle and the next thing i know i go over to disney and there's a place where i have to tell them i want it without commercials and i got it this after three hours and almost passing out Okay, now my question is, I'm a customer. Don't you think they could find, you don't think they could find an easy way of doing this? <clears throat> don't you think Disney would go, oh yeah, well we can simply charge you an extra five bucks a month for the Hulu without commercials and, and we'll tack that onto your bill or whatever. No, they don't have anything like that. As soon as I'm over with, with Verizon, there's no way I can, I can, uh, uh, get it without commercials. So, finally, I just had I I, I had him just quit everything. I said I'll pay the uh, what is it nineteen ninety nine a month for the bundle, okay, and uh, I don't have to worry about it. It's without commercials, and uh, you know. But I mean, after that, I didn't even know if I could do a show tonight. I was just so <laughs> out of it. That yes, yeah. that was surpassed by what went on yesterday when Marjorie and I decided that we wanted to sign up for our, you know, our booster shot. So we went, taught, we went up to Rite Aid and we said, hey, we'd like to get the booster shot. They said, you can only do it by signing up for it online and making an appointment. <laughs> Guess what we spent two hours doing? Because they don't exactly have the best uh, website in the world, okay? And we're going through this thing and that thing. And Marjorie's going, you know, if you didn't know something about the Internet and you didn't know something about this, mm -hmm. we'd never be able to get our shot. Mm -hmm. You know, has it been uh, at least two months since you had COVID? Yes. I got mine yesterday. And I don't give a shit. I'm still going to go get the shot. All right. Good. Good yeah. for you. You know, I don't give a shit. I just spent a couple of hours on Zoom with CDP. You don't know that they don't know that I did. You know that I maybe got no, it three no, weeks ago. No, and Nobody it does, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. 
So, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, fuck them. Fuck them all. I mean, it's just amazing to me that in this day and age, and I'm an older person, and I know something about this, but mm -hmm. I, if I can't figure it out, you know, what about other people, older people who definitely need the shot? And then I go to some other places like CVS and think, well, maybe I can get an earlier date there, right? And I try to sign up for it. And I say, I'm, I'm in the uh, 10026 area code. And they give me all these sites that I can, you know, these drug stores I can go to, pharmacies I can go to that are CVS, but none of them are in my area. And yet I know the one down the street, I could do it just by going down there and using a kiosk they got. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous what's happening now. And all this in the name of, uh, oh, we're living in a real, at the age of high electronics and being able to use the internet and all of this. And I'm telling you, I mean, this was just, today it was just insane. I mean, when I almost passed out, I mean, I was, I finally said to the person, hold on a second, I'm about to pass out here. You know, <laughs> and finally they send me a thing saying, well, how was your experience with Disney Plus? <laughs> and I said, zero, okay. Well, and yeah, then they, and they said, done, tell us so. about your experience. And I said, I almost passed out wait, you know, trying to deal with this and because it gave me so much agita. And it probably was my blood pressure. Because well, when, when I was through, I went yeah. and saw Marjorie and she said, your face is red like a beet. You know, well, that's kind of sad because you know you're you're actually trying to make them more money. You know, you're you're offering to pay them more money, and uh, you know that yeah. it's. A, I mean, you know, uh, I, they've sort of got it fairly straightened out now. But in the early days, Sirius Satellite Radio was like that. You would call them and try to explain that you know, hey, I just bought a new car and I already have Sirius Radio, but. I'm getting it for a year for free, but I get the, I have the full package. The yeah. free package is not that. What's the difference? And I mean, it would be like an hour and a half later, and finally they would come to the conclusion that if you paid an extra $4.82 a month, you could get back to what you had before. And at some point it's like, could you just forget about the free stuff? Just transfer. I, I mean, you know what I mean? It would just be, well, this you know, is serious was like that in the beginning. Yeah, but this is just, this is horrible. I mean, this was just horrible. And, and, and also, you know, um, uh, one of the people I got sounded like he was here in the United States, but everybody else was in a foreign country. I asked one person where they were. They said the Philippines. I said, no wonder I can't understand a word you're saying. <laughs> you know, I mean, do these, you, you, you know, and when, when I think of Disney, I think of an of an American company, right? And I'd like somebody on the other end of the line that at least is in some city in the United States. And instead, I'm and and this wasn't like at ten o'clock at night, you know, when maybe you expect that they would go use the uh, their foreign services. This was at three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And yes, yeah, yeah. well, I, I don't. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't leave the house anymore or uh, do anything. Well, I kept, <laughs> I, I to deal with people. I kept calling back, okay? I kept calling back because every time I get there, I get somebody who I couldn't understand. So I just hung up on them. I dialed again until I finally got somebody who marginally I could understand. And I'm not being racist about this or anything. I mean, I, I'm not asking the people speak perfect English, but I really don't want them to be in the goddamn fucking Philippines, okay? You know? Especially when I'm trying to get Mickey Mouse. You know, so I mean, I just, it was it was such an experience for me today. When I almost passed out, I said, none of this is worth it, you know? The way we're doing business today is just abominable. And also, trying to get a um, what do you call it, a, a, um, um, uh, a flu shot, you know, and a, a COVID shot, and tr just trying to get it, you know, make it easy. Hey, here, tell him, boom, boom, boom. Okay, thank you. I'll see you at, well, I'll see you at 1120 on, uh, on Thursday. But instead, 
It was like, oh, hey, and then you have to uh, take a picture of the back of your card and the front of your card and put the put it in there and blah 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 blah. And I'm going, geez, <laughs> almighty, you know. All I want to do is card. huh? Gave me a new card. Yeah, well, I don't care. <laughs> that wasn't the well, card. I don't know. I... That wasn't the card I was talking about. I was talking about my insurance cards. Oh, okay. They, you, you know, oh, that. please, uh, you know, put it in there. And what's the number of it? And what's the bin number? And all that. I'm going, you know, you to begin with, I have gone up to this Rite Aid, I don't know how many times. And they should have all my information. I mean, technologically, don't we have it so that once I, you know, I like it at the one thing I like about going to Mount Sinai, I they have a my chart thing and I have all my insurance information in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, no matter where I go within the Mount Sinai atmosphere, uh, I I am, am they can find out all that information. But why can't they if they're after I've done business a dozen <laughs> times with them? They had they I've written down my uh, my insurance card number and you know and my supplemental insurance and blah, blah, blah. why don't they have that? You know? They do. It's in Russia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, and and you know then then another thing that, that got to me in the last couple of days is uh, my friend Shecky um, had a situation where he went to an emergency room, much like I did. And the same thing happened to him that happened to me. And that was, I went in with what they call syn syncope or whatever, which was, I was, I was having a, was spinning around and you know, all of that. And um, I couldn't get up and I, I bumped my head in the, well, you know the whole story. So I go there and they say, what's happening? I say, boy, I'm nauseous. I can't, I'm, I'm gonna throw up. I can't stop throwing up. So they give me a pill and I stop throwing up. But it doesn't stop there. They went, well, we better check your head. And then they did a, a MRI, not an MRI, but a, 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 what a, a CAT scan on my head. And then they said, well, we found swollen lymph nodes in your neck. We better do the rest of your body. Oh, and hey, while you're here, we better check your heart and do a, a you know an echocardiogram and on and on and on blood tests. I mean, more tests than you can possibly name. And all I wanted to do was to solve the nausea, right? That's why the the emergency the ambulance took me there. Um, and then Shecky had the same thing happen to him. He goes in because he's got uh, what the, his doctor believes is anemia. And he goes in, and they check for the anemia, and they go, "Well, no, you're you're not anemic enough to be able to get a blood transfusion, or anything like that." But while you're here, let's do an MRI. And then they did a, they did a EKGs, and they did blood tests, and uh, and it's, it was the same thing. They didn't they did the they didn't even go back to solving the problem he went in for. You know. I mean, what is with hospitals today? You know, and I figured out what, what the problem is. They're all practicing defensive medicine. All right? Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. they're practicing defensive medicine. Yep. And they don't want to get sued. So, yep. the, and that goes for your, the doctor you've been going to for years who you've liked and trusted. He no longer can take chances on just not sending you to somebody else. That's right. Okay. The problem is still, they're still practicing. Well, they're still practicing, and it doesn't <laughs> matter that they're still practicing, but it, it, the fact is they're afraid of getting sued. Because if they get sued, what happens? Their insurance goes up, right? Yep. So somewhere along the line, the government has to start insuring doctors, right? So they don't get, they aren't shy at, say, you know, working on Alan here or working on me and that we, you know, not worried that we're going to sue them because they're covered by government insurance. That's what they got to do because people are not getting the kind of medicine they should be getting. And I don't care how much money you've got or what kind of insurance you've got. The fact is they're afraid of getting sued. So they're just not taking any chances, you know? 
And that's why mm -hmm. they wouldn't let Shecky leave until they had done every test possible. And then they didn't want him to leave. They wanted him to stay overnight. And he finally <clears> said, <throat> screw you, I'm going home. You know, so. Didn't he stop taking all of his medicine? Hmm? Did he stop taking all of his medicines? I think he did about a year ago, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, but uh, that's not the point. The point is that it was more medicine than he needed. Yeah. You know? And I'm saying it's good, it's good that he got some test run, though. Yeah. <laughs> See how he's been doing since then. Yeah, well, I mean, he, yeah, but they still weren't satisfied. You know, we're, well, you better stay overnight so we can do a few more, so you can see the GI guy in the morning. Why don't you just give me the GI guy's name and I'll come back in the morning? You know, I mean, come on. Who wants to spend a night in the hospital? Especially when you don't have to. It wasn't like he was dying or he was at death's door and they had to work on him, you know, there in the hospital. They could take care of it the next day. So he finally, his doctor called him the next day and said, get back there, you need a, you need a blood transfusion. He said, "Make I'll go over on Monday. He said, I'll go over on Monday. And I don't blame him, you know, because I went through the same exact rigmarole. And then after I was through, oh, you got to go to this uh, blood uh, hematologist, oncologist to go find out what's, what's with, the, with the enlarged lymph nodes. Hey. They looked at it. They looked at all my blood work. They looked at everything, and they went, "Sorry, we can't see you. You haven't got cancer," you know. <laughs> so I mean, it's just it's just insane. Everything, nothing's easy anymore. Mm -hmm. And is it just because I'm getting old? It isn't easy, or or do you find the same things? I find the same thing. It's not easy anymore. Yeah, no. yeah. I mean, you get so many. You get so many different pieces of information. So, yeah. you know, this is not news, but everybody knows that Ray has COVID. Yeah. And he announced it. But his doctor told him not to take Paxlovid. And he, so he's not taking it, which, you know, his, I, I can't overrule his doctor. I'm not a doctor, but I think it's a bad move when you're over 50 to not take this. There's been so many studies that say if you've got symptoms, to take it because COVID can go from bad to worse in a couple. Well, what of what's bad about Paxlovid? I mean, well, uh, I've had I've had two doctor appointments and they both told me not to take it. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, but I, I didn't. But, but they give you a reason not to take it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did because my um my antigen test was super faint. I have no, I have almost no symptoms, except maybe a little bit of fatigue, mm -hmm. and um. I don't, I don't have, uh, I guess there's some certain requirements that they're supposed to have to like prescribe it to people. And I don't, I don't have any of those. I don't um, think there are. I think that if you just test positive, they and can be over 50. They can, okay. Yeah. They well, can, but I, was, I, I, I got it too. And I'm over 50 and I didn't take Paxlovin and I had some mild symptoms and fatigue and mm -hmm. it was in and out sore throat and a cough. Yeah, yeah. The other the other issue is is um, this this rebound thing. They're not sure about that, but she says uh, both of them said they're seeing more of the rebound than the CDC is reporting. Yeah, but the and, rebound and, um, the rebound isn't dangerous though. No, but that for me yeah. the problem is if I have rebound and I'm not sick, but I still test positive positive, I can't do the play. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but but if you take Paxlovid, you will start testing negative faster right but but if i but what if i have a rebound like two or three weeks from now like mm -hmm. during tech week mm -hmm. i'm out they'll stick my my understudy in and i'm done <laughs> oh so you're you're more concerned about this play than your health no no i still have i why do you need that i, I don't what do you that's just... what it sounds like you're you're you don't want to take back slow but because there's a chance that you could get a rebound and then you wouldn't be able to be no. in the flight. No, that's not the only reason. No, she told no, because I have very few symptoms and I still have a couple of days where I could start the pack. I, I, I had hardly I had uh, I almost no symptoms at all. And I took yeah, the so pack slovid and that meant that I didn't get it. You know, it did they didn't get worse. I had a little bit of a right. I not sniffles, but you know, feeling fatigue and so on. 
and I took it uh, immediately when I first tested positive. And well, I can still take it. I mean, I can. She, she no. told me she would prescribe it to me if I really wanted. Yeah. Well, and, I, and I'm the one who chose not to. So I just yeah, think it's helpful in the first five days. Yeah. Well, let me help you otherwise, Ray. Yeah. Uh, well, that's probably why. Yeah. Brian, I, pretty, Brian's pretty healthy too. He doesn't listen. have all the health issues us old folks have. Mark, well, I have. I mean, I have high blood pressure and high cholesterol, <laughs> but uh, I guess I would have to stop taking my cholesterol medicine. With, yep. With the Paxlo. Well, Marjorie had a cold. Uh, and that was about it. She had a cough. That was about it. But that's when I first said, you yeah. better test you just to make sure. Because she was sleeping that night. And while she was sleeping, she was coughing and that kind of. And we took the test. And sure enough, she was positive. And uh, so I, uh, um, it, this was on a weekend. So we had to wait till Monday to call our doctor. And I was supposed to have an appointment to see the doctor that day. And before I was going to go see him, I decided I better take the test myself. I took the test when she turned out positive, and I wasn't. Then the Monday I took it, and of course I got the you know the thin red line. Uh, and uh, uh, so then I called the doctor and I said, "We both have it. Uh, I got to cancel with you today because obviously you wouldn't want me coming into your office with COVID. And uh, 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 could you could could we get Paxlovid?" And he said, yeah, he said, just don't, uh, what, what was he said not to take? Uh, don't take one of the two drugs. Heroin? Yeah, the heroin, that's right. No, no, what's the drug we're not supposed to take if you're on Paxlovid? Um, I, 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 well, I can't yeah. take Lipitor, there's a whole bunch Lipitor. of them, apparently. Lipitor, yeah, that was it. Lipitor, I can't take uh, it. While you're on, I see what you mean, yeah. But yeah. that's only for five days. That's only for five days, gonna, and then you're good to go. Yeah, no, I'm not five. worried about that. Yeah. I don't know. I just I was just going by what well, you said. Well, I, I, the bottom line of what I'm, fine, what I'm what I'm the bottom fine, line right? of what I'm saying today is I'm really sick of this world and the way in which we can't get stuff done. You know, and the companies don't care about how they deal with you. I mean, there was no reason why Disney couldn't have had some kind of thing in in place where they go, well, you know, you're getting the ba major Hulu, but well, you'll have to pay five bucks more if you want it without commercials, even though you're getting it free from Verizon. Okay, okay. And I kept saying to them, where do I send the five bucks? You know, I would be willing to do that. And they said, well, we can't do that. You've got to, you've got to do it through your through Verizon. I'm going. This is. Then I call Verizon, and they can't do it. And I mean, I literally went from Hulu to Verizon, to Disney, to Horizon, to to Hulu. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it was like this. This. I after a while, I felt like I was in this nonstop loop, mm -hmm. and um, then almost passed out. Eh, what the so, hell? Can I can I ask Brian a question about the COVID testing? Mm -hmm. I think, um, so so uh, I I did two home antigen tests and they were both positive. I did two because I wasn't I, I didn't believe the first one. I was like, what? So I took it again, and then I did a PCR test yesterday and I got the results back today and they were negative. <laughs> and. <laughs> You're a bad patient. Well, the P yeah. aren't the PCRs considered the uh, the yeah. gold? Yeah, gold that's standard. what it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah well, the are. antigen yeah. test definitely showed a line both times. Yeah. Okay. But that one expired three months ago, Ray. No, no, they're new. All, well, all I'm saying is the one you should probably rely on is is the uh, is PCR. The, the PCR. That's test. not what the doctor told me. She yeah, goes, if, if, if the antigen showed you were positive twice, she goes, you should rely on that. Oh, you, you know, PCR? you want to know something? I'm going to no, tell you. No, I went and got the PCR myself. Epox, oh, really? epox, yeah. Epoxy on all their houses. Okay. I know, I'm so confused. A epox on all their houses. Because I don't think they know what the fuck they're saying. I don't think so either. You so know? The, the, risk, the risk of... Uh... You know, of a false positive with a PCR is a lot lower than a false positive with the home kits. And they're both really low, apparently. Uh, both really low uh, probability for false positive. There's a lot higher probability for false negative. 
Uh, you know something? I think the more yeah. I, the more we hear about this, the less I think they know. Okay, I, I'm just you know I just don't think they know what the, what they're talking about. I, I do think I have it though because I, I just. Feel I mean, how many weird. times did we hear finally the CDC misled misled us on a lot of things during the COVID crisis? And this was supposedly the empirical opinion. You know, these were the guys we went to to guide us through this thing, and we find that they were screwing with us. You know, they didn't have it right. Liar, Fauci. Well, Liar. unfortunately, this is science, and science usually gets it wrong the first couple times. So, well, Fauci wasn't the CDC, was he? It was the no, you know, no, no. In, in well, the NIH. CDC, the CDC became politicized after a while. I think during Trump. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, tr yeah, because Trump wanted to hear what he wanted to hear. So this is this will be our last free vaccine, because the Republicans don't want to fund any more COVID stuff. Yeah. yeah well, this will, it won't be the last free one for me because I have insurance. I, I, I mean, from the government, I have insurance too. Right. Yeah. Well, but, I mean, screw the Republicans. Yeah. You know. No which thing. which brings us to the next topic here, <laughs> and and uh, Josh, maybe you you would probably want to talk about this in the next hour. So if you do, just tell me to shut up and we'll get on to something else. Uh, but this whole thing with Trump and this judge is really Very interesting. Is really starting to get to me, and why the DOJ <clears throat> doesn't just ask her to recuse herself because she was appointed by Trump. Yeah, I mean, come on. What do you think? Well, is? I mean, too late for that now, I guess. But uh, and we, I'm sure we will talk about it in the next hour. But um, I, you know, so they've appealed now, so it's it's uh, gonna go to a, a, I think the one of the circuit courts. So uh, you know, we'll see now. So that could change. But uh, about the master guy is that what they call him? Masturbator. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, the the ruler is going to have a little bit of a tough, tough way because, you know, it's going right. to it could evolve in a little bit of a separation of powers, you know, because the, the executive branch owns their own material. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that especially includes classified documents. Mm -hmm. So they sort of have their own rights over how that is managed and how how those rules are made, very similar to the way that Congress is allowed to make its own rules and the courts can't, you know, change that unless for some reason the rules were to, you know, but he's no, he's no less civil rights. But or something correct me if I'm wrong, but he's no longer, excuse me, he's no longer the executive branch. Well, that's correct. But, um, you know, the documents belong to the executive branch still, you know, for forever. Um, and the executive is, branch you know, is now Biden. Correct. And, you know, but the but the rules are set by them. And, you know, those rules don't don't violate a person's, you know, civil rights or anything along those lines. And the executive branch is entitled to set up its own set of rules. And then Congress, the legislative branch, mm -hmm. uh, can can make some uh, some laws to to govern those and assign penalties and things like that. So it's, it it could evolve a little bit into it could creep you know into a little bit of a larger issue maybe. And, and in the overall, it's just not you know the the ruling in part is just not necessary. I mean, the executive, the Department of Justice and the FBI are part of the executive branch. And the documents belong to that branch of government. They they have the right to determine who can view them properly and who cannot. Um, you know, so if they want to claim that some of this is executive privilege, or I'm sorry, uh, 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 attorney client privilege and all that, I mean, there's some decent, you know, justification for that. But the people assigned to the case can review those documents quickly and immediately set aside anything that is not, you know, government related, mm -hmm. you know, that should be easy to figure out. So it's kind of BS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it doesn't matter now anyway, because the latest excuse from the Trump team today that they, they gave to the archives Posted, a no. while back was that it was, 
it was just news clippings. News mm-hmm. clippings, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you know, like I'm so vain that I had to carry out 20 bankers boxes of my own news clippings. <laughs> okay, whatever. Well, he never made it to Time Magazine. You're the man yeah. of the year, so. I mean, uh, Ron, I, I'm just saying, even if it like that's who even says that? You know, like the most vain person in the world is the only people that I know of that would keep. 12 bankers boxes full of their own press clippings. I mean, for, for what? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, all I'm saying is, is that, that that's such a joke. That all he's doing is trying to run out the clock on this thing. Right. You know, right? Uh, he's hoping that if he runs out the clock, he's going to survive it. But they supposedly there's so many investigations against Trump right now that he's not going to mm-hmm. scoot on all of them. You know. Yeah. Here in New York, you've got the attorney general's got about two against him, and then there are local jurisdictions that have got stuff against him, and I think the IRS is going. I mean, it's it's, you know, he's in right. a lot of trouble. He's in a lot of trouble. Well, sure, you know, and 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 you know, running for president and being president are also two different things. Running for president doesn't give you protection from anything. I mean, I argue that you know. Being president should not necessarily grant you all this protection. I've really never agreed with that can't charge a president with a crime line of thinking. Um, you know, that I I mean, some people well, are okay with it. I think it's a little flawed, but... Well, let wasn't me... it Bill Barr who came up with that? Well, a lot of people have said that for many years. I mean, that started uh, before Nixon even. It started, it was, they debated it at the Constitutional Convention. I mean, you know, they, they were not... Uh, outside of the thinking that you know it would be possible to have an executive at some point who was corrupt after Mm -hmm. all they had just fought a revolution against someone who they thought was corrupt their thinking was a little flawed but look monarchs and and dictators were corrupt throughout history before 1787 it was not new that the leader of a nation could be a criminal or a thief or a terrible person so they thought of that Mm-hmm. You know, and it kicked it around. And it was a little divided then, too. I mean, you did have some people who said one thing and some other people who kind of thought the way that I did, which was, hey, you did a crime, you charge him with a crime. You right. know I mean? Right. So, right. You know. Like Saddam Hussein. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> yes. Uh, Alan. Uh, Alan. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to bring up what an asshole Ron DeSantis is today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to bring that up next. Oh, okay. Sorry. Mm. But uh, I'd like to exhaust this first, and then we'll get into that. Then we're, then if we forget the about DeSantis. Also, the, uh, there are two other governors in, in the mix. Yes. The Texas governor. Two assholes. And who's yeah. the other one? I'm trying to remember who he is now. Is it Minnesota? It's something like but this, that. But DeSantis took people that were in the state of Texas and flew them up there at, at Florida's cost. And it, it sounds like there's a federal crime because well the ones the ones from Florida originated in Texas, right? And they were yeah. flown to Florida, and then DeSantis flew them up to I guess we're off of Trump now, uh, flew mm-hmm. them up to uh, Hyannisport, mm-hmm. which is you know I think very nice Martha's of them to send Vineyard. them there. Yeah, Martha's but Vineyard. but yep. here's Martha's Vineyard, Vineyard. Yeah, um, so but here's the thing. Uh, my it's argument here is, it's I, I may jobs. be wrong in this, these people didn't know where they were going. They didn't know why they were being put on a plane. Some of them didn't know why they were being put on a bus. And isn't that considered kidnapping? Yep. The federal government says because he took them, these people, out of Texas, and they were criminals, and the feds had control of them, he did not, and so he has violated federal law by going to Texas and grabbing these people and sending them up there. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with that. But uh, the guy's such an idiot. It's inhumane. I mean, well, you, you know, I guess this is nothing new for him to be inhumane. Anyhow. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we might call it inhumane. I don't know if I put it in the exact category of inhumane, but it does come in the category of kidnapping. You know, it would be inhumane if they weren't getting fed. You know, when they got to uh, um, uh, Martha's Vineyard. They were steak and lobster for them. 
the yeah, the people no, really the people the there yeah. because uh, they had heard what had happened. The locals there all came out with food and clothing and right. blankets mm -hmm. and things like that for them, and just Back welcomed them with open yeah. arms and said, "God bless you." You know, we're happy to, you know, uh, uh, t uh, uh, we're we don't want you to be here, but uh, since you're here, we want to make sure you're okay. And then, I mean, yeah, might as well mow my grass while you're running. Yeah, yeah, and then they took them by <laughs> they took them. I think it was by bus uh, off of Martha's Vineyard onto the mainland. And uh, what did they do? They uh, they put them they in an like army a base, military a military base, military facility. Yeah, where mm -hmm. they you know have, but I mean this is a terrible thing they're doing because they're suddenly saying hey it's our it's not that you know they don't want the problem it's our problem you know well why is it suddenly the north's problem as opposed to texas's problem you know i i just i just don't understand it and i find it cruel and i find it uh inhumane, inhumane and and i have a solution okay. they've sent do you know they've sent over what did i hear over is it 4,000 to New York City so far? Maybe more? Maybe mm -hmm. close to 10,000? A large amount, okay? And so what I figure we should do is we should round up a bunch of our homeless who live in the subways, put them on buses, and send them down to Texas. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Or, or, so, or I mean, there's... Kidnap DeSantis and drop him off in Guadalajara. <laughs> yeah, right there in Guadalmala or something like that. You know, there's a Acapulco. I mean, there is a labor shortage, and there's news every day about you know the labor shortage and companies not being able to hire uh, you know uh, employees and, and and things like that. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe the government should be trying to you know uh, screen some of these people a little quicker and a little better and. Well, trying to help fill the labor shortage. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, I, I just think that... That makes too much sense. You know, you know what's happening here in both the Justice Department with uh, DOJ, with, uh, with uh, what's going on with Trump and uh, all that stuff, and with this deal, is that nobody's taking proactive, uh, uh, any kind of proactiveness towards this. Is that the word I'm looking for? Uh, taking any kind of proactive stance and saying, hey, you can't do this. This is against the law. It's kidnapping. You can't do this. Uh, you're claiming, th you know, you're a judge who was appointed by Trump and only had, I think it was six months of experience as a judge. Mm -hmm. So you have to recuse yourself because you're prejudiced in this situation because this is the guy who gave you your job. I mean, isn't that enough, Josh, for them to be able to get the whole case thrown out of that courtroom? Uh, I mean, I think that would be a tough sell. Really? Just because, well, just because the nature of the courts is that, you know, who appointed you really is never supposed to matter. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, in real. I mean, you know, in reality, you know, judges are people and people are susceptible to their own mm -hmm. you know personal feeling or you know corruption or whatever mm -hmm. but it, it's not generally a, a, a legal basis for you know something like a, a recusal or something like that I mean if if the if the Trump administration or the government is suing to fight something when he's president for example I mean just something made up and you know the case goes to the to the court you know i mean it's not like you know in the nixon watergate tapes you know case any you know the court said okay well anyone appointed by nixon can't can't sit on this case you know um or something like that because it's not supposed to matter because the judicial branch and judges are supposed to be removed from that i mean i understand that people are going to counter argue yeah but they're not you know okay that's a conversation but you know, it's not supposed to matter. Yeah, but this is a woman. Um, this is a woman of little or no experience, you know, I mean, who yeah, got that's... her job because Trump appointed her. Yeah. And who's she going to vote? You know, who's who's she going to rule in favor of? Do you think she's the kind of judge that isn't going to pay back uh, her uh, her dues? 
I, I don't know really because you know I don't know much about her and we don't know her personally and you know and, and that kind of stuff I mean I don't think we can know that personally I mean you know if I mean I'm saying that it a lot of that's a person's own you know integrity if you will I mean you know if I were appointed to be a judge tomorrow by well, Joe I would... Biden and six months from now he was accused of some crime and something came before me I, I yes, would but that's you that's that's you uh, you know and right. and and Josh, and I think that uh, that's why I would vote for you for judge. Uh, you know, but I mean, this woman is obviously she had no experience. She was appointed to the to the bench, and then when he needed to get this thing before a judge, they actually went out of their way to find this judge and to put it in front of her, as opposed well, to some, you know some other judge, right? Yeah, I mean, but I think they have a, I mean, they have their case on the merits, you know. I mean, it's too, like I said, it's too late for the recusal uh, issue now anyway, because, you know, the decision has been made. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they do have their case on the merits, I mean, which, you know, I think are pretty decent. You well, know? but I mean, she doesn't think so. Argument. She does. She obviously doesn't think so. No, she doesn't. But you know, it's out of her hands now. Is you know? it <clears throat> whose hands is it in now? Well, it'll go to the to the next highest circuit. Uh, should be a circuit court of appeals. If she's just a federal judge at whatever, yeah. so it you know, I, I mean, I, I haven't read, so I'm just you know, based on how the law works, it should go to like the circuit court of appeals or whatever for whatever circuit that is in. I can't remember. And you know, when it goes, it'll originally set before like a three judge panel, probably the circuit court of appeals. And the Circuit Court of Appeals is usually made up of a big number of judges, like 18 or 21 or something. And then I think they're kind of divided into some subgroups who hear cases, you know, because the Circuit Courts get a lot of cases um, and, you know, don't necessarily have all the right of refusal and everything like the Supreme Court does. So the caseload's pretty high. So then they divide them up into like teams or, or something mm -hmm. like that, I believe, and they hear certain cases. So it's going to go usually before a panel. Um, if they have appealed, I mean, they just filed their official deal and I haven't read the article yet, but that's what will happen. And then, you know, it just depends. And I mean, and then, you know, and then if, if they, if they overturn it, you know, that's basically, you know, that's it. Her, her word isn't going to matter anymore. I mean, the only option above that is the, is the Supreme court. And it's, I don't think they're going to take it and get involved in that stuff again, hmm. you know? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, cause they have the right to refuse it. So, uh, and, and it's such a, I don't know, I don't see that as something that they would want to, you know, dip themselves into, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't I don't think they want any more controversy than they've already had for a while. And, you know, they're on a break and stuff anyway. So, well, back to the, back to know. the subject of, of Republicans acting badly. Um, the, not only did they send them to... Uh, we're up to uh, Martha's Vineyard. And also, where was the other place they've been sending them? New York. But they no, also no. sent them to uh, Kamala Harris's home. Yeah. What's with these Republicans? Are they children? Yes. They've gone out of their minds. <clears throat> I mean, they're... Let's go, Brandon. Those are, those, are kid, those are kids' things to do. You and know? by the way, in the case of <laughs> one of these, DeSantis... This is a guy who people are talking about having run for president of the United States. Yeah, he's like the, the, the number one pick other than Trump. But I saw, oh, I saw him, I saw him on CNN. What, what was he, how was he defending what he did? I was at the gym when I was watching the... I couldn't hear. Oh, he says uh, he's doing it because we should have to suffer up here. Like they're suffering down by the border. Well, to begin oh. with, they're not suffering in, in, in Florida. What happened was is the the the, uh, uh, the governor of Texas sent a bunch of migrants to DeSantis so he could put them on an airplane and send them to, you know, it wasn't yeah, like it wasn't state. like they suddenly showed up en masse in uh, in Florida uh, and became a problem. Hmm. Yeah, the long swim from Texas. From Mexico to Florida. And by the way, nobody ever argued about all those Cubans that wound up in Miami years ago. 
no, and, they and, mm-hmm. and they made homes for them there, and they made them citizens here, or at least gave them green, you know, green cards, things like that, <laughs> you know. To, all my ancestors came over here like in 1905 illegally. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but <laughs> well, it wasn't illegal. I mean, but in the case over. in the case of uh, of. Uh, of these Cubans, I mean, what is Miami but a but a whole town full of Cubans that came over from, from um, uh, uh, from Cuba, and and you know why can't they be sympathetic to a bunch of of, of other uh, Hispanics and Hispanic cultures who are trying to find a better life here, who are running away from killings and murders and. Uh, you know, a horrible, oppressive life in in South America. That's what America's about anyway. That's why we've been here all these years. Right. And I'll tell you, this weekend they start a thing on, uh, on uh, PBS, uh, Ken Burns did, about the way the United States handled the Jewish refugees during World War II. Yeah. And uh, I, you should watch that because I think it's going to be an eye-opener for a lot of people because that's exactly what we're doing to the Mexicans. If it's not mm-hmm. people we don't approve of, we don't let them into this country. And a lot of Jews had to go back. Yeah. You know, they were not allowed. My to grandfather. Go. He had to go, you told that story, tell it again, it's worth telling. Yeah, this is a great story. It gets there with uh, his wife and uh, three boys. Mm-hmm. And, uh, my grandfather decided to take his beard and shave mm-hmm. before he gets there. Yeah. This is while on the ship. Right. So he gets in there and the guy says, let me see your password. He goes, you're not the right guy. Get out. Go back. So here's my grandmother with four boys in New York, no husband. She survived, but and then he came back. But he, but I think it took him a couple of years to get enough money to go back. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, so I mean, that, that was another case of you know we we just I don't know if you're Anglo-Saxon you were able to get into this country, but if you're Jewish, I mean, like the Syrians right now who are trying to get into this country, we're having a hard time. You this know, this country is full of foreigners. That's what we're about. Well, we are an immigrant country. Immigrant country. Better you know, well, yeah. except for the except for the Native Americans, look how we fucked them over. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is racism, really. That's what you got to think it. Yeah, it's well, it's racism in politics with the with yeah. The, with the These government. governors are racist. Yeah. yeah, that's it. And they just don't want Mexicans or or you know people who uh, can't speak English well the same way that they like it to be. And I'll bet you there's a couple of those people who are being shipped all over the places that can speak English. Right. Yeah. 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 And my last question tonight is, what is television? Because I've yet to figure it out anymore. They had the Emmys the other night. Only one network show got any Emmys. Wow. Everything else was like, uh, you know, Netflix and Hulu and uh, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying to myself, what's television? I mean, what do you consider television now? You know, in the old days, they wouldn't even have somebody like Netflix be considered. And now if they don't, they don't have anything. But I mean, it's it's really become a very interesting thing. It's really a big change. that. And where 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 are movies now? Are movie theaters getting any no. kind of business at all these days? I mean, everything. I love going because no one's there. Right. Well, it's probably a safe place to go because no one's there. Yeah, but most of those things, you can, if you wait long enough, you wait a couple of weeks, it's going to be on uh, on Netflix or on Hulu or <laughs> you know. Well, it, a lot of people are afraid to go into an indoor place like that because of COVID. Well, mm-hmm. I don't know that COVID presents a major problem now, okay? Especially if you wear a mask in the movie theater, you know? But, I mean, since all, okay. that, <laughs> since all that stuff is available through other sources, why go to a theater? 
you know? Well, because, I mean, some movies I like to see on the big screen and, right. and all that. I went, and, yeah, saw, I went I was... and saw West Side Story because it was better on the big screen and, and, the, and the new Top Gun was good on the big screen. Well, you know what got me about the Emmys? What a bad television show it was. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's the television awards and it was the worst television show of the year. They've yeah. all gone down the tube. Oh, well, they, 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 this got the lowest ratings in the history of the Emmys. Mm. Yeah, really? Nobody cares. Nobody cares really? about the awards anymore. I think awards are passe. They are. My, 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 my young, my boys, their generations, they could care less. Absolutely yeah. care less. Yeah. 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 And, uh, uh, you know, what happens when, when you know, a, a person who's on TikTok gets more views than the number one movie in the country. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you see this guy on uh, YouTube? I forget his name. One of the big guys on YouTube, this kid. He opened a burger joint in New York. Did you see that? No. There was like hundreds really? of thousands of people showed up. Mm. It's incredible. Really? He opened a, oh. like a burger shack. A burger shack? <laughs> yeah, in some mall somewhere. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. I think. Mean, you know, we're, li yeah. we're living in weird, weird times. It's like the Truman Show. <clears throat> well, they do that with milk, milk tea places. Milk tea places, they blast it on Instagram, and then they right when they grand opening, and there's a huge line. People wait an hour just mm -hmm. to get stupid milk tea. All Me? this will pass, too. Eventually, there are going to be so many podcasts out there, nobody's going to be listening to any of them, you know? Mm -hmm. Like uh, mine. Nobody like listens. like yours. Well, maybe ours will have a chance. You know. I get like 10 people. Oh, well, you know something? If you get 10 people, that's five people more than most podcasts. I know. I know. Most of them get none. Most of them get Stay none. Stay healthy, Ray. Stay what? healthy. I want to watch you. You're going to be performing in, in the town that I live in. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so listen, uh, Josh is going to be doing a little show uh, next hour. It'll be yeah. it'll be shown on Facebook, and you can also uh, hear it on uh, on our you know uh, our feed, our audio feed, and uh, he will attempt to do uh, do a show. So maybe all you guys can call if when we sign off here, you give us about oh four minutes or so. I have to go set it up on a oh you know I me mean? I played I've been playing the wrong theme song lately. <laughs> I don't know what my problem is. Wait a minute. Hold on. There we go. That's it. Okay. Anyway, thank you, Josh. Thank you. Uh, um, what is with me these days? I play the wrong theme song and so on. Anyway, uh, uh, thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, thanks to uh, Brian and thanks to uh, uh, Alan. And, of course, thanks to Ray as well. I hope you get over your COVID. Everybody give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you and say so long, everybody. Okay. Listen, right after us, uh, uh, Josh is going to be doing a, a show. Okay. Uh, so why don't, you, uh, why don't you join him? Uh, and uh, you just simply use the same thing. Go to the same sign-in you find on gabnet.net for this show uh, to be able to call uh, and, and use uh, a Zoom. In the meantime, I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you again on Monday with the pop-up show at 4 o'clock on uh, Monday. And then we'll see you again on uh, Wednesday uh, at uh, 1030. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Have a nice weekend, everybody.